Okay, this video series is going to be called the 28th Massachusetts at Gettysburg, and this is going to be part one here on Gettysburg Battlefield Ultimate. And we're going to talk about a regiment of Massachusetts volunteers and their movement and actions here at the Battle of Gettysburg on July 2nd and 3rd of 1863. Now, the 28th Massachusetts was a part of the Second Corps under William, or I'm sorry, Winfield Scott Hancock. They were under under first division under John C. Caldwell, and the second brigade under Colonel Patrick Kelly here at Gettysburg. Now, about 4 a.m. on the morning of July 2nd, 1863, the Second Corps began to move from their position down near the Maryland state line along the Tawny Town Road, and they began to head northbound on the Tawny Tawny Town Road toward the town of Gettysburg. Now, around 11 a.m. in the morning of July 2nd, they come to the intersection here where you see this white farm. That is the Jacob Hummelball farm. Now, Pleasanton Avenue was not here at the time, but there was a farm lane, and they made a left onto that farm lane and then came here into the position that we are now standing. And they arrived here about 11.30 in the morning of July 2nd, 1863. And from here they would be placed into position. Now around the same time, between 11 and 12 o'clock on July 2nd, 1863, as the Union line extended from the Ziegler's Grove area down into this area, um, Dan Sickles, the commander of the 3rd Corps, was positioned into a position down with his line anchoring the round tops. He was very unhappy with that position. He did not like the position that General Meade put him in, and he decided at that time he was going to move his men forward about three quarters of a mile into high ground surrounding the Sherfy Peach Orchard. And when he did that, he would open up the entire Union line uh, with holes, and they would have to fill those holes, and the men would have to be shuffled around. This has been the 28th Massachusetts at Gettysburg, Part 1 on Gettysburg Battlefield Ultimate. Okay, this is going to be the 28th Massachusetts at Gettysburg, Part 2, on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook. And we're standing here today at the Pennsylvania Monument. And on the morning of July 2nd, 1863, around 11.30 in the morning, uh, Father William Corby, the chaplain of the Irish Brigade, uh, stood on a rock in this area and gave general absolution to the troops. Now today, the Father Corby Monument actually sits about 900 yards here south of our position. But the rock actually sat right here in the area of the Pennsylvania Monument in 1863. When this monument was built, um, there was a slight hill and a lot of rocks on the ground, and they were moved to build this monument. So this is actually the area where Father Corby gave his general absolution. Now as a, a Catholic priest, he always began with, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and he sat the Irish Brigade down around him. And he gave what was called a general absolution to the troops, absolving them from their sins if they had been killed in battle. Now, not only Catholics, but Protestants were so moved by this that they knelt as well. Uh, Major General Winfield Scott Hancock, his headquarters sits right over here, where you see the upright cannon in the distance. He stood nearby, and though he didn't kneel, he did doff his hat out of respect for Father Corby. Little, to the, little did the men know at this time that most of these men uh, who knelt down in prayer and received that general absolution, this would be their final prayer. They would be moved, and about an hour and a half later, they would be engaged at the bloody wheat field here at Gettysburg on July 2nd, 1863. Now at this time, Hancock orders the men to form up, being uh, the 28th Massachusetts and the Irish Brigade. They were then moved across this today, this street, into this field to the west of the Pennsylvania Monument. And when they were moved into that field, they were put in two ranks. And the first rank, on the left-hand side, would have been the 116th Pennsylvania Volunteers, and to their right, would have been the 28th Massachusetts. And the second rank behind them would have been the 69th 
then the 88th in the middle, and then the 63rd New York to the right. So they had two ranks, and they were first formed in this field to the west of the Pennsylvania Monument. In our next video, we will begin to look, we will go over to the Father Corby uh, Monument where it sits there today, and we'll begin to talk about how they moved from this position toward the George Weikert Farm, and then how they would end up over at the wheat field. This has been the 28th Massachusetts at Gettysburg, part two here okay, on Gettysburg Battlefield. The 28th Battlefield Massachusetts at Gettysburg, part three here on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook and Ultimate. And we are going to talk now about uh, the movement of the 28th Massachusetts from their position uh, just to our north here. Now, again, around three o'clock in the afternoon, Hancock orders the men in this direction because now, as Sickles has moved out with his third corps, this end of the Union line is now vacant and he needs troops down here. So the second corps troops, all four brigades, the brigades of Kelly, the brigade of Brooke, the, the brigades under Zook, begin to move into this direction by the left flank. Now the 28th Massachusetts in Colonel Patrick Kelly's brigade, they're over here in the field and they now march by the left flank. And the order of march is going to be the 63rd, 88th, and 69th New York Volunteers in the front, followed by the 28th Massachusetts, and then finally bringing up the rear would be the 116th Pennsylvania. And they're going to move along this field right here in this direction in two uh, ranks toward the George Weikert farm which you can see over there in the distance. Now when they get to the George Weikert farm they halt momentarily and then they front back into their original two rank position as they were over here where the site of the Pennsylvania Monument is today. Um, while we're here we're going to turn around and we're going to look at the monument to the Reverend William Corby, the chaplain of the Irish Brigade, the Catholic Priest. And this monument, uh, when it was dedicated, it was said to have that the same rock that he is standing on here with the monument is the same rock he stood on when he gave his general absolution. We do know that the absolution was down further toward the Pennsylvania Monument. And as I said in the last video, when they built the Pennsylvania Monument, they kind of trimmed down the hill and they removed a lot of the boulders that were in the ground. They most likely had moved the boulder that he stood on that the men remember him on and moved it down here. One of the other reasons that that monument was put where it is here is because at one time, in the late 1800s into the early 1900s, there was a fully operational steam engine that brought tours to Little Round Top. And we did a video series in the past called the Gettysburg Harrisburg Railroad Round Top Spur. And you'll want to go back and watch that video series. In that video series, I do show and mention that railroad. And that railroad actually one time, if you look over here to your left, you will see the top of the Corridori Barn. And just to the right of that Corridori barn is where the uh, railroad had crossed the Emmitsburg Road. It then made its way down toward the Pennsylvania Monument, which there was a park there at one time. There was actually a baseball field down there, not far from the, the wounding spot of General Hancock. And then made its way into this area right here before crossing this very road right here where I'm placing my cane today. And if you look in the distance, uh, you'll see a clearing in the woods over there. And that's actually where the Gettysburg-Harrisburg Railroad steam engine crossed this road and went into the woods. And there, there are still markers out in the woods, iron railroad tie markers that's, uh, uh, that used to hold signs, like whistle signs, and they're still uh, embedded into the ground. Uh, this has been the 28th Massachusetts at Gettysburg, part three on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook and Ultimate. At Gettysburg, part four here on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook and Gettysburg Battlefield Ultimate. And we are here today at the George Weikert Farm. Now this farm and the house that you see over there was actually built in the year of 1787. The barn was built in 1794.
Williams is currently uh, getting its bricks repointed again. That's what the scaffold is for. And the 28th Massachusetts, as they march uh, from over the area where the Pennsylvania Monument sits in the comma two at the left flank, they reformed in this field into their two ranks again, which then put the 116th Pennsylvania with the um, 28th Massachusetts to their right in the front rank, and then the 63rd, 88th, and 69th New York in the rear rank behind them. And they hauled it briefly, and this is where there's a little bit of confusion with the march, because at this point, point now, Sickles is out at the Peach Orchard. He moves his men out at the Peach Orchard, and if you look down the road here, you will see the Trossel Barn, and that is where Sickles uh, made his headquarters down there at the Trossel Barn, and that is also where he would be wounded at, at down here at the Trossel Barn. But in this area right here, um, the brigade began to split with the different uh, commanders. Uh, the, the, the commander named Zook, Colonel Zook, would take his troops down toward the Trossel Farm because they weren't exactly sure where they were going to meet up yet. There hadn't been decided that this particular brigade was going to be moved into the wheat field. They were here all supporting the empty hole in the line that Sickles had caused by moving his troops three quarters of a mile forward. Uh, over here on the other side of the George Weikert farm would have been where uh, Colonel John Rudder Brook and Colonel Cross would have moved on the other side of the farm down toward the hill that you see over here in the distance. However, Colonel Patrick Kelly's brigade, uh, including the 28th Massachusetts Volunteers Brigade, would actually take the George Weikert farm lane. And that farm lane today is the same farm lane it was in 1863. It goes down here and then turns around to the left. Give us a minute here for the car to go by. That farm lane uh, goes down here and then it bends around to the left along the stone wall. That farm lane would then connect with the John Weikert farm and that is where we are going to pick up in our next video. The 28th Massachusetts at this point would then be put into ranks of two after they were formed. Now Longstreet is attacking the troops. He's sending out McClaws and he's sending out Barksdale and they're all moving forward. They're coming under fire. The battle's about to begin here uh, in heavy terms. Uh, the 28th Massachusetts would take the George Weikert farm lane down to the John Weikert farm. They would be in the order of march that they were here by the left flank again, which again would be the 63rd New York, 88th New York, 69th New York, 28th Massachusetts Volunteers, and bringing up the rear once again, the 116th Pennsylvania. This has been the 28th Massachusetts at Gettysburg Part 4 on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook and Ultimate. Okay, this is going to be the 28th Massachusetts at Gettysburg Part 5 here on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook. And I'm standing here today on the absolutely gorgeous John Weikert farm lane. Now in our last video, and as we pan around behind here, in our last video um, we were at the George Weikert farm and we showed how the 28th Massachusetts was marching in two ranks up the Weikert farm lane. Well, the Weikert farm lane actually is in the distance over here beyond this house and the wooded area. And it becomes the John Weikert farm and the John Weikert farm lane, which we're standing on now. Now, it was on this farm lane also that the 20th Maine, under the command of Colonel Strong Vincent, also marched their way up to Little Round Top. Now, the 28th Massachusetts is the second to last in line, and we're going to move forward here. They're the second to last in line on the march. Of course, the, the line is as follows. It is the 63rd New York, followed by the 88th New York, then the 69th New York, then the 28th Massachusetts, and then bringing up the rear, of course, was the 116th Pennsylvania. And they're coming into this area along the John Weikert farm lane, and this is about 5 o'clock now in the afternoon of July 2nd, 1863. 
And what they hadn't realized the whole time was that as they had marched by the left flank, they were actually becoming inverted. And this caused the problem when they got to the end of the John Weikert farm lane. Because they're inverted at this point, everything is backwards. When these men counted off one, two, one, two, one, two, the taller men in the rear rank, the shorter men in the first rank, file closers, the flag bearers in the center of the line, now when they reach the end of this lane and they're ordered to front, everything is backwards. And this is very difficult for anybody, a soldier during the American Civil War. Realizing this, um, Colonel Kelly made some adjustments to his line. He moved the flags and the file closers into the proper position, but just kept the men inverted. And then, they, of course, they would turn right here and they would march toward the wheat field. And this is where they would first be engaged at. So we're going we're gonna to walk up here a little ways toward the wheat field, and we're actually going to cross Plum Run. And this is the run that leads from this area through the Valley of Death into Devil's Den. And the 28th Massachusetts Volunteers and Colonel uh, Kelly's Brigade would cross Plum Run right over here. And actually, we'll just point it out to you. It's that bridge right here in the distance. Now, of course, at the head of the column of the 28th Massachusetts was their Colonel Robert Burns. And at this point, uh, the 28th Massachusetts uh, Second Corps, First Division under Caldwell, Second Brigade, they are actually separated because, again, John Rudder Brook and Edward Cross are moving into a different area. Colonel Zook is moving down another area. And here, bringing up the center, would be Kelly's Brigade. This has been our next part, the Part 5 of the 28th Massachusetts at Gettysburg on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook and Ultimate. Okay, this is going to be the 28th Massachusetts at Gettysburg, Part 6 on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook, and I'm standing here on the northeast corner of the Bloody Wheat Field. And this is the entrance point for the 28th Massachusetts and Kelly's Irish Brigade on the afternoon and evening hours of July 2nd, 1863, around 5 p.m. Of course, they entered the Wheat Field right here today where you see the 11th Pennsylvania Reserves, which was also known as the 40th Infantry. They arrived into the Wheat Field right here where this monument sits behind me. Um, and when they got into this area, they got out of those ranks of twos and back into their battle front again. And of course their battle front, as it was over by the Pennsylvania Monument, was the 116th Pennsylvania in the front on the left, on their right would have been the 28th Massachusetts, and then the rear rank, 63rd, 88th, and 69th New York Volunteers. And at this point, Colonel Zook appears in the wheat field over here in the distance as he came from the Trossel Farm. To the left of the 28th Massachusetts, over on this area, would have been Colonel Edward Cross. So now these men are not now entering the wheat field. They're not the first soldiers to enter the wheat field and fight in the wheat field. Troban was up there fighting, and Winslow's battery, New York battery, was up there firing at uh, South Carolina infantry from the 3rd and the 7th South Carolina, which was under Kershaw's brigade. And we'll get a little bit more into them because the 28th Massachusetts is first going to be fired upon by the 3rd and 7th South Carolina infantry. Again, they move in this direction uh, toward the wheat field. Now, on July 2nd of 1863, the field that you see behind me was chest high with beautiful golden wheat, grains of wheat. Just a couple hours later, this field would be strewn down with dead men, and all the wheat would be trampled down to the ground, and there literally would be pools of blood. Men um, afterward would say that you couldn't walk on the wheat field without stopping over a body and then puddles of blood. Now, in 1863 also, um, these borders of the wheat field were completely contained by Virginia worm fences, and, and fences like you see over here along the road now. This whole field was contained by these fences. As these soldiers moved into this position where I'm standing, they took these fences and knocked them down, and that's going to be a very important thing in a later video of what happened to the wounded and dying men 
that suffered here for two days in the wheat field. This has been the 28th Massachusetts at Gettysburg Part 6 on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook. This is going to be the 28th Massachusetts at Gettysburg Part 7 here on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook and Ultimate. And we are standing here in the bloody wheat field, one of my favorite spots on the Gettysburg Battlefield. And we are now going to look at the movement of the 28th Massachusetts as a part of the Irish Brigade here across the wheat field. As we said in our last part, they entered the wheat field in the northeast corner. And this was a quiet entrance, and these men are now moving across this beautiful golden wheat here on July 2nd, 1863, around 5 p.m. And as they move in this direction, in the distance, just beyond the sign that says wheat field, in the distance you're going to see some artillery up there on the hill, and that is Winslow's New York Artillery. When they reached that area, okay, of Winslow's art Artillery, um, that was where they were first fired upon by the 3rd and the 7th North Carolina of Kershaw's Brigade. This is also where b things began to break apart in the bloody wheat field. As I said before, the battle had happened. These guys were another wave of troops coming through this wheat field. But this first wave of troops that entered into this area were being beaten back and pushed back by Kershaw's Brigade. Um, Winslow's battery began to retreat. And, they, and these men now, the 28th Massachusetts is trying to advance through the wheat field and troops are backing into them and crossing in front of them. And this creates quite a bit of confusion. And to break away from that confusion, Kelly then moves them at the left oblique. So he gets them when they're up there on the hill near the battery and moves them at the left oblique and they are going to exit the bloody wheat field on the southwest corner here in the distance where you see the lady sitting with the blue shirt on there in the distance and the monument behind it. That is where the 28th Massachusetts and Kelly's Irish Brigade are going to exit the wheat field and enter the Stony Hill. Now when they are doing this they begin a, a, a very hard push on these South Carolina troops. And these South Carolina troops were completely taken by surprise by this movement. It wasn't expected. And they begin to fall back and when they get close to the rocks over there on the Stony Hill, they actually begin to take prisoners, and we're going to talk about a little bit what they've seen and experienced in our next part. This has been the 28th Massachusetts at Gettysburg, Part 7, on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook and Ultimate. Okay, this is going to be the 28th Massachusetts at Gettysburg, Part 8, here on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook and Ultimate, and we are here now at the base of the Stony Hill. And as the 28th Massachusetts and, and Patrick or, uh, Kelly's Irish Brigade uh, began to push these South Carolinian troops back off the Stony Hill, this is where they began to take prisoners. And we're going to walk up the Stony Hill to the monument of the 28th Massachusetts. And while we're doing, we're going to make a couple little secret pit stops here and tell you a little bit about it. First off, these sets of rocks right here is where Confederate wounded and about 10 Confederate dead were spotted. Most likely these were men from the 3rd and the 7th North South Carolina of Kershaw's Brigade, rather. Um, one of the little secrets of the battlefield, if you come up here, is a, a rock carving that is here on this boulder, and it says PB. Nobody really knows what PB. It could be an early visitor to the battlefield of Gettysburg. It could have been a veteran that come back after the war, carved his name in a rock, maybe where he... Uh, was engaged at. No one really knows, but it's one of those little things that people pass by this area all the time. Of course, right across the street, as a part of the Irish Brigade, is the monument to the 63rd, the 69th, and the 88th New York of Kelly's Brigade. This is one of the more, and if you want to come on over here closer, this is one of the more uh, beautiful monuments on the Gettysburg Battlefield, but it also contains a secret that not many people know about. And if you'll just bring the, the uh, camera over here, we'll show it to you. Depicted at the bottom of this cross is an Irish wolf camp. And in the side of this, in real small script, it says that this is the Irish wolfhound, which is extinct. Now, when this monument was dedicated and this bronze relief was put on here, it was believed at the time that the Irish wolfhound was an extinct dog. And of course we know today that is not true. There, You can still get an Irish wolfhound. 
it had almost become extinct at one time. And because they had thought it was extinct, they actually put the extinction notice here on the side by the Irish wolfhound. And in our last and final secret as we make our way up the hill, and of course this is in the path of Kelly's Irish Brigade with the 28th Massachusetts, they cross this very ground. And just over here behind the 5th Michigan Monument is something that we know as the Dock Rock. Now the Dock Rock is a temporary field hospital, not made with tents, but with bullets. And this was the surgeon of the 32nd Massachusetts, Z. Boylan, set up his field hospital right here between these boulders here on July 2nd, 1863. It may have been probably the closest field hospital in the vicinity of a battle action at the Battle of Gettysburg. Bolson sets up his area right here, and you can imagine on July 2nd, with Confederate troops attacking from the west, that this probably was one of the safest spots in the Stony Hill Wheatfield area because it shields these big, huge boulders here would shield you from most musket and artillery fire. So Bolston very smartly sets up his field hospital right here. Um, and this has been the 28th Massachusetts at Gettysburg, Part 8 on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook. And This is 28th Massachusetts at Gettysburg Part 9 here on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook and I'm at the left flank marker of the 28th Massachusetts and as we left off in our last video here as they started to march up the Stony Hill, um, this is where the 28th Massachusetts along with the Irish Brigade and the regiments in the Irish Brigade pushed back the 3rd and the 7th South Carolina of Kershaw's Brigade. And we're going to walk up to the 28th Massachusetts Monument now so if you'll just follow me. Now as the men uh, made their way up this hill to the position where their monument was, the 3rd and 7th South Carolina Infantry retreated. They retreated up the hill and then turned to the left and started heading toward the Rose Farm. So the 28th Massachusetts is placed in their line here. This is their monument, and next to their monument is their right flank marker. Their left flank is anchored here, their right flank here. Now the position of their line would be the 63rd, 69th, and 88th just down the hill. The 28th Massachusetts here, and then of course the 116th Pennsylvania. Again, all part of that brigade, all on the brigade line. Kershaw's men, South Carolina, are now chased here, and they're at the apex of the crest of this hill. Now they're heading down the hill toward the Rose Farm. And this is where, this is the high water mark of Patrick Kelly's Irish Brigade. This is where they begin to celebrate a victory. They had actually come across the bloody wheat field, up the hill, and pushed soldiers that were behind rocks back, which was a pretty amazing feat. In our next video, we're going to take a little bit of a look at the monument before then finding out exactly what happened that caused this small victory to become a failure. This has been the 28th Massachusetts at Gettysburg Part 9 on Gettysburg This is the 28th Massachusetts at Gettysburg Part 10 here on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook and we're sitting here uh, at the monument for the 28th Massachusetts and we're going to take a look at it. This monument is 13 feet four inches tall and it was dedicated in the year of 1885. It's a four-sided monument. At the top of the monument, remember these men were from Ireland, but they have the U.S. Eagle at the top along with the U.S. Crest. However, under that they have a Gaelic saying called Fagabala, which meant clear the way. Now one of the interesting facts about this monument, this monument was actually on a stop on March the 30th, 1963, by President John F. Kennedy. His tour guide, Jacob M. Sheeds, had actually stopped at this monument to the 28th Massachusetts and asked him if he knew what that meant, and he knew it and said, clear the way. Now, the men of the 28th Massachusetts, when they dedicated this monument to show their um, 
patriotism toward the United States. If you look at the font on the monument, it's all pretty much in the same typesetting, except for the date, July 2nd, 1863, and then the words American Union at the bottom, which are actually in bolder, larger font. So these men who were Irish immigrants had made this their country and were proud of their new country and actually made American Union. Now around the rest of the monument, um, it has the the symbols for Ireland, the Harp of Erin, um, and then of course on the back side over here it has the second uh, uh, Corps infantry badge, and then the Harp of Erin on the side. Again, they were the second brigade, the first division of the second corps, 212 as we like to call it, and uh, they were led here at the Battle of Gettysburg by Colonel Robert Burns and under the command of the brigade commander, Colonel Patrick Kelly. This has been the 28th Massachusetts at Gettysburg Part 10 on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook. Okay, this is going to be the 28th Massachusetts at Gettysburg, Part 11 on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook. And we just took a look at the monument, and the men are celebrating this victory. They push these soldiers from South Carolina back toward the Rose Farm in this direction. And everything is looking good. And then all of a sudden, all hell breaks loose here on the Stony Hill. What has happened is Kershaw's men go back to the Rose Farm, and they meet up with some other brigades, and they begin to reform. And now they're going to have a push back up the hill. But the biggest thing that happens at this point is General Barksdale begins to break through at the Peach Orchard over by the Sherfy Farm. And Wolford and his Georgia boys break through. So now what's happening, Colonel Burns has his men with their backs facing the wheat field, concentrating on the South Carolina suit. And now on his right, there's a breakthrough by Confederate forces. So now they're going to be attacked on their left by Kershaw's again. They got Sims out here fighting, and now over here you got Barksdale's troops and Wolford's troops breaking through at the Peach Orchard. They're going to be surrounded, and Colonel Burns knows this, and instead of his men being captured and embarrassed, he decides to have an orderly retreat back through the wheat field. Now when they go back through the wheat field, they go back through the same area that they entered the wheat field on, all the way back up the lane, and then back to Cemetery Ridge. On the evening of July 2nd, 1863, as they lay down at night and think about what happened during the day, it must have been a little bit demeaning to them for them to gain all this ground, only to lose it and, re and, and give it back up again. And on the night of the 2nd into the 3rd of July of 1863, they actually form in a single file line along Cemetery Ridge and build earthworks. Meanwhile, any of the wounded troops from the Irish Brigade, from the 28th Massachusetts, as well as anybody else who was engaged in the wheat field. These wounded men are left out in this wheat field suffering and dying during the night. The fences, as we talked about, that were broken down when these men entered the wheat field are no longer there. And wild hogs began to enter the wheat field, feeding on the dead and the dying soldiers. Many of the men that were in there that took diary accounts, remembered the screams of men who were mortally wounded and could not fend for themselves and were being eaten by wild hogs, as well as the sickening sight of wild hogs feeding on the dead flesh of their comrade soldiers. This has been the 28th Massachusetts at Gettysburg, Part 11 on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook. Okay, this is going to be the 28th Massachusetts at Gettysburg, Part 12, our final part here on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook and Gettysburg Battlefield Ultimate. And I'm standing here next to a friend, David Denton. And one of the reasons for this video series was a special request. David Denton is the great, great, great grandson on his mother's side of a soldier that just took part in the action that we just explained in the last two hours of our video that we shot here regarding the 28 Massachusetts. Sergeant Francis Roach. He was actually a private during the Civil War. Francis Roach was born in 1837 in County Kerry, Ireland. Um, and he died on August the 22nd, just in a couple of weeks, in 1879 in Lynn, Massachusetts. Now, he was the son of James Roach and Mary Mayhem. He immigrated to the United States sometime before 
his marriage to Anne Fitzpatrick on January the 8th, 1859, at St. Mary's Catholic Church in Lynn, Massachusetts. Um, he had uh, children, uh, he, or rather, he was enlisted on December the 17th, 1861, and he was mustered in the service on New Year's Eve of 1861. Um, he was a shoemaker by trade in Massachusetts. Uh, he re-enlisted in the service on New Year's Day of 1864. He was wounded at the Battle of Spotsylvania, and he was promoted to sergeant after the surrender of Robert E. Lee on May the 25th, 1865, and finally being mustered out on June the 30th, 1865. He had six children. They were Mary Ann in 1860, Francis and James twins in 1862, Thomas H. in 61, Peter I. in 1866, Charles A. in 1867, and Nellie in 1870. And they attended the St. Mary's Catholic Church in Lynn, Massachusetts. Now, I did say he died on August the 20. Second, 1879. I'm going to have David finish up here and tell you exactly what happened to him and how he died. And this was also uh, in a newspaper, and I will also post a picture of the newspaper obituary as well. Well, he died. He was became alcoholic at the end due to the war, and actually fell in a well and was drowned in the well. And they they try, they pulled him out of the well and tried to re revive him, but it was too late and he passed away from the drowning. So again, one of the sad things that you see over and over again about Civil War soldiers, and we always talk about lieutenants and colonels and heroes and this brigade commander, but the, it was the private soldier that restored the Union with the colors. The men who fought were the private soldiers, and back then they did not have a treatment for, for depression or things that would be caused that we know about in the military today. So obviously this man had become an alcoholic, maybe because of his experiences in the American Civil War, to the point where he actually took to the bottle a little bit too much one day and he, and he drowned in a well. It's a very sad ending that he survived the American Civil War and all of the battles that this, this, uh, this group was in. I do want to mention also that the Irish Brigade, the 28th Massachusetts at the Battle of Gettysburg, carried a green flag with the harp of Aaron on it and it didn't say 28th Massachusetts it was the 4th Regiment of the Irish Brigade it was a large green flag and there is a great painting out there I highly recommend by Dale Gallon which I'll post of uh, the 28th Massachusetts in the center of the line coming from the wheat field up to the Stony Hill I hope you've enjoyed our presentation of the 28th Massachusetts here at Gettysburg I do want to thank Patty and David Denton uh, for their uh, request for me to get inspired to do this and also David for having the descendant here uh, in the 28th Massachusetts here uh, Karen from uh, Karen from the Gettysburg past and present group Karen Harris who's gracefully uh, handled the notes that I really didn't need a lot to the end but she's carried them around for me and Patty also for being my uh, filming person today which has made this video all possible this has been our presentation of the 28th Massachusetts at Gettysburg on Gettysburg Battlefield Facebook and Ultimate